All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, Happy Model Express LRS transmitter and receiver that I put on my Instagram probably a couple weeks ago and have been using a little bit here. And I'm going to show you a little bit about, you know, talk about what it can do and what it's, who it's really for and all that stuff. Now, the transmitter module, I already have it installed here, uh, does not include this little box that comes with um, some of your uh, transmitters. So you you have to probably either source one yourself or um, 3D print one. I think there's a lot of 3D printed ones out there. But the transmitter module is actually inside here, and they do include the antenna. And this, this is a standard JR module, not the um, nano module for the like X light or the T light. So it's the standard JR module, and then the receiver here. And it's pretty tiny. It's about the size of a Crossfire nano receiver. I'll put a foot up here. What it looks like it does include the Immortal T, Immortal T style antenna. Of course, this is a 900 megahertz system, so you get the much larger antennas. There um, is also a 2.4 gigahertz Express LRS um, system as well. I don't know if Happy Mile will be making those uh, later or not. I know some other companies are developing that, and I think that there's also um, ex existing firmware that can convert a ghost system into Express LRS, uh, but that's not the scope of this video, so I'm not going to talk about that in this one. So you can buy this as the bundle with the transmitter module and a receiver, or you can just buy the transmitter module by itself, or you can buy the receiver by itself. So I'm not really going to talk too much about what Express LRS is. There's already a lot of videos out there already. I'll link down in the description the link to the wiki page that describes what it all is. Most of the Express LRS stuff has to do with flashing uh, existing R9 uh, transmitter and receiver modules to the new firmware, which basically gives you um, a more reliable 900 megahertz link in terms of the control link. And actually, based on the range tests I've seen online, uh, it's better than Crossfire, better than Ghost. Um, I mean, I didn't do any of those type of range tests, but I've seen some guys taking their wings out 30 kilometers on 100 milliwatts of power. So, and this is still pretty new stuff, so, it does seem like it's fairly robust, and I haven't had any problems in terms of fail safes either. Um, now, in terms of my own range tests, I'm, you know, nothing really too fancy here. I'm running the DJI system on mine, so you know I don't have any fancy OSD or telemetry data or anything like that. All I can tell you is that I went out on max power, um, 700 milliwatts, and I went as far as my video could take me, and uh, my uh, link quality on the um, on the receiver never fell below about I think about 75, so you know it, it went pretty far. Basically, uh, if you're flying DJI and you're flying the Express LRS receiver, you don't have to worry about uh, running out of range on your control link. You're gonna you're gonna run out of video before you run out of control link. Now, currently, uh, I'm not 100% sure if the firmware that's on here it's currently on here is the same that is um, currently available, downloadable from the wiki pages. I wasn't really getting, I didn't get really clear information from Happy Model about that. I have a feeling that they've modified it a little bit. Now they didn't provide any instructions with this at all. And the only instructions that I could find were on the MakerFire product page where it explained about binding. That was the one thing that I couldn't figure out because um, based on what I read on ExpressLRS, when you flash the firmware to the module, the transmitter module and the receiver, you put a binding phrase in and that'll be like your password and basically the receiver and the, and the, and the transmitter would be already bound at that point. So when I turned all this stuff on and it, I didn't have any sort of signal or control link, I was like, well, that's weird. I would, was assuming that it would already come bound, but it isn't. So you have to go through this procedure where you, you power it up, you wait for the green and red light to turn on and then turn off. Then you unplug it. And then you repeat that process three times and then the red light will flash quickly. And then the quickly red flashing light will indicate that the receiver is in bind mode. And then you go into your transmitter to do the bind. And this bind procedure wasn't documented anywhere on the wiki page that I could find. But if you go into your scripts here, you do have to install this Express LRS script. That's a Lua script. You can get, you can get that from the wiki page. We'll go in here. And you see there's no connection because I don't have the receiver turned on, so we'll go ahead and power that up. Okay, so now we have our information here on packet rate, telemetry ratio, current power level, which you can change. 
I'm going here, let's see here, 50, 25, 10 is the lowest, and 250, one watt, two watts, yes, yeah, so I'm pretty sure you can take it up. I'm pretty sure you're gonna to have to figure a way to add additional supplemental power if you can take it to that power level. I don't know what the maximum power level of this particular transmitter module is. They didn't tell me any information on that. I couldn't find anything on the product page either. I mean, the script will let you go to two watts, but I don't think the actual power output is gonna be two watts on this. Okay, so anyway, so uh, once you get the receiver into bind mode, then you go down to this here and then you can actually bind it. And then you'll get this information once it's bound. Okay, so one more thing to mention is that it does use the Crossfire uh, protocol receipt or the Crossfire protocol for this um, transmission module. And so basically, when you go to set up your model, uh, you have to choose external RF, of course, and the mode is going to be Crossfire. So then you just have to use, instead of using the Crossfire Lewis script, you're going to use the uh, ELRS Lewis script to control the module. So yeah, so basically, regarding future firmware updates on the, this particular receiver and module, I don't exactly know how that's going to be supported because you you know you do have to use a, this I guess there's this new um, GUI program called the uh, Express LRS Configurator, which I'm pretty sure is, is supporting all the like the R9 receivers and there's various other ones out there, but I didn't see any information on that on the Happy Model receivers in there at, at the time of the recording this video and maybe added later. I'm assuming it will be because there's going to be Happy Model and some other vendors that are going to be coming up with. Express LRS hardware, so I'm going to be assuming that the developers will eventually support all this new hardware that's coming out because it's basically all based on the same chipset and firmware. But because of this strange bind procedure that I hadn't seen before, this might be new that isn't out yet, it might be like beta firmware or something like that. That's why it kind of threw me for a loop. Um, you know, again, this is still a I don't know, this is all pretty new, so a lot of things are going to change. So pretty sure if you're watching this video a few weeks in the future uh, from when it was released I'm sure a lot of things have already changed if not going to change so that's why I'm not really putting a whole lot of information in this video I just wanted like it's more like an introduction and the sort of like my you know brief experience with it so far so good uh, I've been you know time will tell as to how things are going to develop in terms of the firmware and, and, and the support and stuff like that. that's the thing. And that's the thing about like how easy this is to use. If you're trying to get this, you know, thinking that's going to be as easy to use as Crossfire or some of the other established products that are out there, I can tell you right now that, yeah, maybe in the future, but right now it isn't, isn't at that level yet. And we'll have to see. So I um, can't promise you anything, but I'm pretty sure the developers are probably going to be working on that to improve it and make it much more user-friendly than it is currently. Anyway, also uh, another question I'm sure a lot of you guys will have is pricing. And I can already tell you that I've checked a few times and things have already fluctuated. So um, yeah, it depends on what bundle you get. And I think the, the best bundle is to get the transmitter module and receiver together. Uh, last I checked, that was $53, I think, if I remember right. Uh, of course, it's probably different now. It fluctuates up and down, so you, I, I would encourage you to check the link down in the description to see what the current price is. I don't know what it would be when you're watching this video. I'm assuming that prices are going to continue to go down. I do know that um, uh, the receiver by itself, I think, is around $18, which is not bad considering Crossfire receiver is around $30 with the immortal T antenna and $25 with like the the cheaper antenna and I'm hearing that there's gonna be some other vendors out there that will be providing receiver bundles for even less as perhaps as low as 14 or $15 so you know if you're looking for a system if you don't have anything currently and you want some sort of 900 megahertz or 2.3 gigahertz like uh called it's called like a, a LoRa system this is what this uh, the, the system is based on then you know the prices are going to probably pre pretty decent because it's going to be a lot of vendors making hardware for it because the software is open source and being developed by open source developers so um you know it's pretty easy, pretty cheap for a lot of these vendors to create a lot of this like cheap hardware out there you know and you know whether or not any of that stuff is going to be good i don't know it's stuff i don't have it's going to be coming out in the future so you know, I'll have more videos on those later if um, I haven't run across those or if, sent, if, if I get sent any of those products in the future. So that's going to cover for this particular video. If you're worried about range and everything, um, it seems fine. Like I can go as far as my DJI video can take me. 
I don't fly super long range analog like some of these guys that go 30 kilometers with their wings. So you'll have to look for some of the videos on that one if you're looking for evidence that it'll go that far if you need that kind of range. But, you know, there is uh, definitely some people out there that have had pretty good success with it. And I haven't had any problems in terms of like random fail safes or anything like that. Now, one thing I do want to know is that I had um, issues with uh, telemetry warnings on the radio because I guess telemetry is only supported at like a very low power level from the receiver, like I think 10 milliwatts or 25 milliwatts. So as soon as you get to about, you know, half a kilometer away, you start getting telemetry warnings from the radio. So I just turned all that off because I don't really care about telemetry. And that just got rid of the warnings for me. So I can go as far as I want without the radio bugging me about telemetry lost and telemetry recovered warnings. I'm thinking that that might get fixed later in the later firmware. But, you know, for me, that doesn't care about telemetry. Not a big deal. For those of you that do, then this might be a deal breaker for you right now. You may want to wait. All right. So that's going to do it for this one. Uh, links down in the description. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.